Hi, I'm Dory Cantor and I would love to show you how to make a prismatic painting. This is a project that is included in my book, Art Escapes. It's in a chapter called Have Fun and Keep It Simple. You'll need just a few art supplies in order to make a prismatic painting. The first thing you'll need is a pencil. A number two pencil is just fine. Next thing you'll need is a round watercolor brush. This, this one is a number six, but um, you know, any small round uh, tipped brush will work great. The next thing you'll need is three pigments of paint. Um, it, these are the three pigments that I call the, the full spectrum triad, and you can read all about that in my book. But they include a primary yellow color, a primary blue color, and a primary red color. The next thing you'll need is a small piece of watercolor paper. And let's get started. So with your pencil, you're going to draw a very simple outline image of any object that is right around you. It could be your, your coffee cup. It could be a very simple flower shape. So I'm going to start by drawing the shape of a cup and saucer. So I'm going to begin by drawing an oval that represents the inside of the cup, the lip of the cup, and drawing the cup itself. I'm going to come in here and draw a handle shape. I'm drawing casually and playfully and I'm not going for any kind of realistic depiction just having fun with the shapes. So I have my cup and saucer. So what I want to do next is um, draw some lines on top to um, fracture the shape into these prismatic sections. So I'm just making some loopy loops on top of my cup and saucer. And that's my subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a nice saturated puddle of some of if each of the three colors in the full spectrum triad. So right here I've mixed up a nice wet but saturated puddle of the primary yellow that's in the full spectrum triad. Right here is some of the blue. So it's just pure pigment with some water added to it, so it's a nice wet puddle of pure pigment. And here's some red. So these are the three colors I'm going to be painting with. I want to use something called a wet and wet technique, which means that I'm going to wet an area of the cup. I'm going to wet it so that there's like a clean water puddle. I'm going to select one of the full spectrum triad colors, some of the pure pigment of the yellow, and I'm going to create a wash of pure yellow on top of that puddle of clean water. And then I'm going to choose a second color. And in this case, I'm going to choose a little bit of the red, the primary red color, and I'm going to drop it in drop in some of the wet red, primary red, that's represented in the full spectrum triad, into that wet yellow puddle. And I'm going to lift the paper and tilt it, and I'm going to let the water mix and fuse the two colors together. And that's the wet and wet technique. That's so beautiful. So next, I'm going to choose an area which is not right next to the first area because if I paint right next to a wet area it will bleed into the next. So I want to let each area dry. So now I'm going to put, I'm selecting the um, part of the outside of the cup and I'm creating a wet puddle area. I'm wetting the entire area with water and again I'm going to choose one of the full spectrum triad colors. And this time I'm going to choose some blue. I'm going to pick the full spectrum color blue. 
and I'm going to paint that as a background wash over the entire area. And then I'm going to select a second color, and in this case I'm going to choose yellow again, as I did earlier with the first shape. And I'm going to add the yellow, kind of you know, a wet application of that yellow into the wet blue and get a wet and wet color fusion effect that way. The next shape I'm going to use will be down here where I'm mixing, I'm going to mix together in this case I'm going to put yellow as a background and I'm again going to add some red drops of red paint into it. So let's get our yellow background into the watery um, foundation and I'm going to drop some red into it. Red that I've mixed with water so it's like dropping wet paint into a wet puddle of water. And I'm going to um, lift and tilt the two pigments together and then I'm going to add just a little bit more of that red just to make it a little more intense in one corner area so that there's a real movement from the red to orange to yellow in that section. This project illustrates the expressive quality of the full spectrum triad and shows you how many rich and beautiful colors you can create with um, just three colors. And I think this kind of prismatic painting technique where you break a subject into smaller shapes is a wonderful way to create kind of a, a luminous depiction of, a, of, of your subject matter that's very different from um, simply painting one shape with one color. All of these colors that we're creating on the prismatic painting, this kaleidoscope of colors, are created with just three pigments. The three pigments in um, one of the triads that I use. In this case, it's the full spectrum triad. And there's such a richness that's um, possible with three really well chosen pigments that give you this quality of depth and richness and harmony in their mixtures. It turns out that using a limit, these limited palettes in, and um, using the, the four different triads that I, that I ex talk about in my book are paradoxically liberating rather than limiting. I feel as if I can express myself through color so much more easily by using just three well-chosen pigments that are represented in the four different triads than I did when I had a whole box of watercolor pigments in front of me. And I think part of it is that I used to paint and paint and paint and find out that what I had achieved was a muddy mess and layering color upon color upon color that just got duller and duller as each stroke went on and became very frustrating for me and I really had to go back and learn about color theory in order to see how to avoid that and how to uh, really create color mixes that were that would work for me and not work against me. So there you are. The prismatic painting is done. You could continue and paint some of the um, areas in the background if you wanted to that are created by the lines, but I think it looks fresh and lively just the way it is. That's prismatic painting. It's fun, it's simple, and it only takes a few minutes. I'm sure you can think of a dozen variations yourself. It's a perfect art escape.